On the surface, Hyperpanel seems to be much easier to customize when it comes to basically customization and changing the layouts and other parts of what makes a status bar a status bar. So in contrast to Hyperpanel, which is operated using a GUI, you would have to customize Waybar using a JSONC file along with a style.css file. Now, if you compare that to Hyperpanel, where all you have to do is just flick a couple of switches inside of a GUI, right? That seems to be much simpler and therefore much easier to maintain along with a whole host of other things that get unlocked when something is simple, right? In that case, why am I not using Hyperpanel? Well, that is what I will be telling you in this video. But in order for me to clearly illustrate the point, okay, that I want to share it with you, I'm going to have to install Hyperpanel first so that you can get to know what the entire process looks like. Now, if I were to go to Hyperpanel's GitHub, okay, or we can just look for Hyperpanel here. There we go. Now, all we have to do is just install AGS Hyperpanel Git and we would get Hyperpanel onto our system. Now, before that, if you wanted to actually check out what Hyperpanel is, it's basically considered a Waybar alternative. In fact, I've made a video on how you can customize it previously on my channel. So if you want, you can go and check that out. But in this video, what I will be talking about is why I personally don't use it, even though it seems to be pretty simple. Like, it looks good too, but it's not without its own, you know, grievances. So let's figure out how to actually install this thing so I can set it up and show you what's going on. Yeah. So here you're just supposed to get AGS Hyperpanel Git. Now, because I'm using the chaotic AOR, I'm able to just install this AOR package without actually compiling it, which makes things much, much easier. So let's just do that. AGS Hyperpanel Git. There we go. Now it's been installed. So what we're going to have to do after that is just scroll down over here and we should be able to find that there's a launch command, which is as simple as just typing in Hyperpanel. So let's go here, type in Hyperpanel. And there you go. This is what we're seeing right now. Looks pretty good, right? It actually fits in with the Capuchin theme, which if I just show you what that theme looks like. First, let's kill Waybar, or never mind. It's just going to be restarted anyway. So if I just switch to the Capuchin theme, as you can see here, this is what you see. The wallpaper changes along with every single color for every single app that I'm using. From my terminal to my VS Codium, to my Discord app as well. So if I just open Discord and show you that, this is what you see. Now, if I wanted to, I could also change the theme to something like e-ink, which means that everything becomes very e-ink-like. Now, I could do this for a bunch of other custom themes as well. And by the way, if you want to learn how to do this, if you want to learn how to make something like this for yourself, you can go ahead and click the first link in the description. In fact, this is exactly what I teach you how to make inside of Hyper Accelerator, which is a program that's the first link. So if I just show you what that's all about, right, in Hyper Accelerator, if I just scroll down to this theme switches module over here, which is in and of itself just over two hours long in a 10 hour long program, right? Just in this module alone, I teach you what theme switchers actually are, the different kinds, how to set up wallpaper based theme switching, where basically use, you use a couple of tools in order to extract colors from the wallpaper, and use those colors to paste them all across your system from your waybar to your terminal to basically every single app that you're using. And I also, of course, teach you how to set up custom theme switching so that you can select your favorite theme from a list of pre curated themes of your own and basically just get started with using whichever theme that you want. So if you want to learn how to make something like this yourself, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description, and I would love to help you out. Now, as for Hyperpanel itself, let's first of all, switch the theme to Capuchin, just because the default theme is Capuchin, it makes looking at things much, much easier and less jarring. Okay, now after that's done, we'll have to kill Waybar and just open Hyperpanel like so. And there you go, this is Hyperpanel, right? Now, despite it looking this good, and despite the fact that you can actually make it look even better by going into the settings menu, and then configuring a bunch of settings over there, right, you can do a lot of stuff, that's great. But there is something missing that I personally noticed. And that is basically the same kind of feel that you get when you tweak variables and just add in lines manually that you were able to do inside of a text editor. Now, for example, if I actually just go here and open my Waybar config, okay, config.json.c, this is what you see, right? So here, in a way, you're technically working with code. JSON C, okay, is code in a way. So you're going to have to just copy and paste 
some stuff from the Weibo wiki, which is not too much of a big deal. And not just that, but then it teaches you the skill of scanning, right? Scanning text and scanning code, along with troubleshooting in case you don't get syntax right. So that's something that you learn when you're configuring Weibar instead of just editing a couple of switches here and there when it comes to GUI, right? Along with that, you're also going to have to learn CSS. That's something that this actually just doesn't teach you because the max amount of configuration that you can do by default is just changing a couple of themes inside of the theming section. So somewhere here, if I remember, right, you can use this theme, you can import a theme, and then you're going to have to pick one of the pre-made themes here. Now, if I wanted to, I could pick a theme to illustrate properly something like Tokyo Night Moon Vivid. Okay, it's going to reload. And now if I switch to Tokyo Night, this is what you see, right? There you go. Perfect. Now it works, it looks good and all, but by default, these are the only themes that you have. And if you wanted more, well, you're going to have to write them yourself. Not a big deal when it comes to really a CSS file, because all you're doing is just adding a bunch of colors in there. Now, if I go to colors to show you what's going on, colors, custom, let's show you Tokyo night. Okay. Now here, all I'm doing is just, I'm defining a predefined set of colors and these colors are being referenced by each of these style.css files, as you saw earlier. So if I open style.css, we're just importing colors.css, and then we're using those colors here. So at bg0 is just going to be the background, the border is going to be blue, so on and so forth for every single color that I'm using. Now, if you wanted to create your own custom theme for Hyperpanel, it's not quite that easy because first thing, okay, first of all, what you're going to have to do is go inside of these JSON files, okay? Now, you're not just editing CSS here, you're actually going and editing colors inside of a JSON file, and there are way more colors to deal with than just whatever ones that you choose inside of Weibot. So that's one reason that I personally didn't like it. And the second main reason, okay, this one's actually the deal breaker for me. It's it looks too tame. That's right. Hyperpanel just literally looks too tame. If you take a look at any hyperpanel setup, okay, it doesn't matter whether it's my default one over here or even a heavily customized one with fonts changed, icons changed, this and that changed, even with this workspace module moved all the way to the right, all the different shenanigans that you could possibly do with hyperpanel, okay, it still has that hyperpanel vibe to it. Maybe it's the way the modules are configured. Maybe it's the way the bar entirely is just written using AGS and Astel. Now, whatever it is, you just can't seem to shake this feeling that it's written inside of Hyperpanel or basically you're using Hyperpanel. So it's kind of one of those things where if you see it, you just can't unsee it, right? Now, Waybar, on the other hand, is just not like that. You can configure Waybar to seem like, hell, even Quickshell, if you get it right, right? You can make it seem like Polybar. You can make it seem like i3 status any status bar that you, that you could possibly choose. The possibilities are basically limitless. But when it comes to Hyperpanel over here, our good friend, the possibilities are not quite limitless, but then they're quite limited, at least in my experience, right? In my probably around a week or two of using Hyperpanel, I just didn't even like it. And I remember as soon as I got it, I just ended up switching back to Waybar the very same day. But then I decided, you know what? It's probably worth giving it a try for at least a week so that I can figure out what the hell is actually going on here. So I did, and I ended up customizing it, right? To the point where it doesn't just look like this, but then it looks much better, which I show you how to do inside of this module here. So inside of status sorcery, I cover Waybar and Hyperpanel, which one to pick for you specifically, right? And how to customize Waybar highly in depth. Again, the reason why I choose Waybar is because there's a lot more work that goes into it. It's not that I don't show Hyperpanel at all. Don't show how to configure it at all, right? I do show it. But then compared to, right, let's just show you. Compared to customizing Waybar, it's not that much work. So you can just get it done pretty quickly. Now let's show you. Yep. So this is the part where I customize Waybar just completely from scratch. Now as for Hyperpanel, that's somewhere at the end. Yep. So previously, this is what it looked like. And here we're just going through the motions of customizing it so that you can get it done. Now, eventually we get it to look a little something like this with the floating island style modules and whatnot. But yeah, that is how I teach you to configure Hyperpanel as well. So if you want to learn how to do that and Waybar and the custom theme switcher, you can go ahead and click the first link in the description. But basically, those are my two main reasons for why I personally don't use Hyperpanel. Even though it's nice, even though it's easy to configure, even though all the configuration options are exposed in a beautiful GUI like so, right? It's just not for me because Having rice hyperlined for over four years now, right? I've been doing this for quite a while. There's just 
a different feeling that you get when you edit config files by hand and come up with creations that look as good as, in fact, let me just show you, as this one here. So let's just kill hyper panel. Okay, it doesn't seem to want to die. So if we reload, we get way bar. Now, how do we kill this thing? Let's figure it out. Okay, it's most likely going to be AGS. Okay, well, let's see what else is going on. Hmm. We look at the help section here. Okay, there you go. Quit. Dash Q, and there you go. But yes, as I was saying, four years of customizing Hyperland has allowed me to create waybars like these, along with waybar theme switches like these as well. So in case I wanted to switch up the aesthetic of my waybar, depending on whether I wanted something more minimal or something more maximal, right? Like the one that I have usually, I can choose whichever one I want with the simple press of a button. That's not something that can be easily replicated with tools that provide you with GUIs and don't necessarily allow you to access the lower levels the lower intricate parts of what make an app an app. That's it. If you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, along with a Waybar theme switcher like this one as well, along with a whole host of other desktop environment like features, like this logout menu here, from this Overwatch panel as well, right? This notification daemon, as well as this lock screen and a hell of a lot more, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check Hyper Accelerator out. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.